Hello and welcome to Shankar, engineering, design, art. This is the magical time of year that we've all been waiting for. The time of year where innovation and creativity come to life. The time of year of the graduating projects of our seniors. Follow us as we take you on a selected tour of diverse and fascinating projects. Let's go. Welcome to the Fashion Design Department. This project was designed by Yuval Elroy and is entitled Autre. Humanity swings from one crisis to another and sometimes has no other way to survive these crises than through escapism. Yuval took her inspiration from a form of escapism known as surrealism. She recalls the world's tragedies of the beginning of the 20th century, which was marked by World War I and the ensuing Great Depression, which later became the foundation of the surrealist movement. Now, in recent years, as the world witnesses its own set of calamities, Yuval sees parallels between these two periods and designed a collection that embodies modern surrealism. So what is modern surrealism? It is escaping through social media and morphing ourselves into an augmented reality through filters. Many artists believe that by combining the virtual and real world, they have created the right platform to display their art and encourage us to rethink the body and mind. Yuval's collection mirrors the world of filters, playing with real and virtual. The smile, the fingers, they are literal but Yuval transformed them into wearable art. We are now in the exhibition of Handesayim, or Practical Engineering. The exhibition is named Crowded, not only because of the volume and range of projects that inhabit this space, but also because of the sheer intensity of the educational specialization itself, which is fit into two and a half years and encompasses so much learning during this time. Yuval Cohen created the project Defective Disorders of Body Image. This project examines the phenomenon of body image disorders, anorexia nervosa, bulimia, body dysmorphic disorder, and compulsive eating. Through comprehensive research and in-depth interviews with patients and medical professionals, Cohen conveys the story, feelings, emotions, and self-perception of each patient with his or her unique disorder. Cohen translated each disorder into its own contemporary and experimental visual language, using graphic processing, typography and texts, and even line rhythms. He even took pictures and videos that take you into the experience of the disordered eater and allows you to understand how they perceive themselves. Let's now visit the Department of Chemical Engineering. The following project was completed by Carmel Bomard and Ohad Kazas, entitled The Effect of the Tamar Gas Rig and the Gas Economy in Israel on Air Pollution. In recent years, the issue of air pollution coming from gas treatment rigs has frequently made headlines. The gas treatment process requires the use of pollutants so it is inherently a process with great potential for air pollution. The team took upon themselves to determine and measure the actual impact of these gas treatment rigs on the air quality in the surrounding environments. An analysis of the impact of the rig on air pollution in the area was performed using various tools, mainly by processing air pollution data at the monitoring stations when the rigs were working versus when they were inactive. The analysis made it possible to get a complete and clear picture of the real impact of the Tamar rig on air pollution. The answer? There was, in fact, no connection between the active Tamar rig and air pollution in the area. Let's go now to the Department of Industrial Engineering and Management. The following project was done by Noga Radushitsky and Eleanor Ashurov, called Supply Chain Information Systems Integration. This project deals with the complex task of integrating the information systems 
of the supply chain into an organization. Radoshitsky and Ashurov both work in the supply chain division of the renowned Israeli defense company Elbit, and their research included examining internal chain-related processes. Radoshitsky and Ashurov explain the following. Elbit currently has four main information systems. After a period in which we used the systems, we found many inefficiencies. And the main reasons for this are how the information is transferred, classification of user privileges, and a general low level of understanding of the employees within the relevant functions. After an in-depth examination, we found that by integrating into one system with the correct flow, we can achieve proper communication between the various departments. With proper implementation, this effort will lead to a significant reduction in waiting, working and delivery times. In the long run, this investment will result not only in growth in profitability, but also in quality organizational development. The next department is the Polymer Engineering Department. Here we enter the medical world with a project by Sofer Schier, Hot Melt Biodegradable Bone Adhesive. How do we innovatively deal with the treatment of bone loss or osteoporosis or fractures? Current solutions include invasive fixations that are non-absorbable, such as screws, plates, and pins. This project deals with the development of a hot biodegradable adhesive for bones through a minimally invasive application that will encourage bone fusion. The fusion mechanism mimics the body's natural bone growth processes. The glue can be used in both a dry and wet environment and is based on biodegradable hot glue previously used in the treatment of hernias. We take you now to the Department of Electrical Engineering the following project was conducted by Omar Ophir and Roy Zvi, called Ele Projet. This research project conducted social experiments on elephants living in the Ramat Gan Safari Zoo here in Israel. It did this via a special machine learning system that the students themselves created. Analysis was conducted and observations were measured in order to better understand the elephant group hierarchy, their collaboration and their learning curve. Elephant caretakers at the safari currently do not have the option to conduct social experiments or monitor the elephant hierarchy. This new system will allow them to better understand in real time who is the dominant elephant in the tribe and who is the elephant with the best learning capabilities. In addition, this system gives the elephants more independence by permitting them to obtain food whenever they want. How? The system throws an apple whenever an elephant presses a button. When it's pressed, the system then takes a picture of the elephant and sends it to the server, which identifies the elephant via machine learning. Through the incoming data, the staff can then learn about the behavior of the elephants in the yard. We take you now to the software engineering department with a project about 3D sculpting created by Muriel Turgaman, Sapir Ezra, and Coral Rubiler. 3D has become an evolving topic that spans many areas of our lives, from animation to medicine. However, the ability to engage in 3D is reserved only for those with knowledge and experience, and it's not simple or intuitive at all. In order to make this process more user-friendly, the team developed the 3D Sculpting System, which allows users to create, sculpt, and process three-dimensional digital objects intuitively by using basic hand movements, or simply by using a mouse and keyboard. Using a camera and machine learning engine, the system will recognize the user's wrists and translate those movements into actions such as shrinking, stretching, enlarging, or reducing the object. The uniqueness of the system lies in its ability to combine the accuracy of the mouse and keyboard 
with the intuitiveness of the hands during the creative process. Our next project takes us into the textile design department. It was done by Ariela Zohovitsky and it's called In the Eye of the Storm, a family collage. Ariela's project contains a unique assembly of rugs, jackets, bags, and knitted sculptures, which are based on family portraits of the Zohovitsky clan, including their dog. When asked about the rationale behind her idea, Ariela told us, I chose to assemble these family portraits through a variety of techniques, specifically in this period, when we are becoming reacquainted to the power of face-to-face -face interactions, which are so important despite our modern technological developments. Living in today's world, we are inundated by an inflation of superficial images and photographs, which causes us to skip around, never looking deeper, in this project, the designer encourages her audience to stay still for a moment, be present, and reflect on the meaning of what we observe. We take you now to the jewelry department with a project by Eden Spinner, Mental Wellbeing versus Mental Disorder. In life, people go through journeys that take them to their absolute limits. On the road to achieving balance and harmony, we will pass through crises and seemingly endless chains of abysses and mountains, the ups and downs that make up our lives. Eden tells us, in my project, I chose to deal with the tension between the edges of well-being versus disruption from my own personal experience. I myself was exposed to the edges of manic depression, of difficulty versus ease, of strength versus fragility, of disintegration versus crystallization. Steel wool, which demonstrates in its appearance and composition the same contrasts, was chosen as the working material for this project. Through the material processing, Eden succeeded in extracting the edges of chaos and order and forming them into objects that serve as both physical and mental shields. The technique uses the application of significant pressure on the steel wool, thereby transforming material, just as the human spirit endures pressure and transforms. Let's now visit the master's program in game design with a project called Voice Detective by Kira Weizmann Shapira, Mili Nodelman, Yuval Shai Michaelis, and Bar Dotan. Early detection of hearing loss is critical for normal development and improved quality of life. Voice Detective is an engaging, fun, and mysterious detective game that serves a simultaneous and useful function. It's a home hearing test for children. The game is intended for children aged 6 to 8 and is also an initial hearing screening test. The results are sent immediately to the parents with recommended follow-up steps. The structure of the test is integrated into a detective game that is specially designed to make the test accessible to children in a fun and simple way that encourages them to maintain concentration and complete the test. Welcome to the Visual Communication Department. Let's visit the project by Einat Sharon entitled ear pressure. The very existence of the Dead Sea is in crisis, which can have devastating effects on the surrounding ecosystem and neighboring countries. A nuts final project is an interactive experience that shows the potential future of the Dead Sea. She takes you on a fascinating journey through various sites by presenting an imaginary reality that maintains a delicate balance between the resounding death of the area and its thriving tourism. The installation encourages a critical reflection on important ecological social issues with relation to the condition of the Dead Sea and of Israel in general. Welcome to the Department of Interior, Building and Environmental Design. This project is called The Minute After and was designed by Ravid Hania and Atar Selma. In Ravid and Atar's project, you will witness the concept of space like never before. 
The designers were inspired by luxury villas and familiar horror films. From this inspiration, they played with space and various senses in order to create a specific occurrence and unique atmosphere, bringing us into their fantasy world. How did they do that? The project shows the interior of a villa and the setting of what remains after a morbid occurrence and the sudden mysterious departure of its inhabitants. The experience is not felt through gruesome images, but through the interactions between the objects, the lighting, the shadows, and other elements that give the atmosphere an air of mystery. The team also created a video and a script to show the story of what actually happened that fateful day. We're now in the master's program in design with the following project done by Elad Stauberg, an Israeli student of Russian descent, who designed the project entitled Ham in Mayonnaise. Why has Russian food failed to break into mainstream Israeli culinary circles, especially when Russian people make up such a sizable and important section of the Israeli population? How is it possible that we see the use of classic dishes from the kitchens of so many different ethnicities, but there is a clear lack of representation of Russian cuisine? Stauberg's project attempts to present the frustration of Israel's largest immigrant community, those from the former Soviet Union, about the exclusion of Russian food from Israeli cuisine. The project revolves around the Russian dining experience, represented by a tablecloth that begins on the table and continues by enveloping a space that is marked by a variety of stigmas and prejudices about Russian food. This magic tablecloth is presented with traditional Russian dishes and placed in the center of the room. These dishes come to life through the application of knitting a traditional Russian craft. The tablecloth itself is decorated with customary Russian embroidery, but embedded with messages in an atmosphere of Israeli chutzpah in order to provoke thought, defy, and protest. The project moves along an axis between old Soviet tradition and new Israeli ways with the aim of normalizing the integration of Russian culture as part of the new Israeli society.